everyone. Good morning and welcome to the channel. So in today's episode, I'm out in my garden. It's the end of the season, but I still had a few of these beautiful sunflowers blooming. And I was, as I was walking around shooting them, I noticed this sweet little flower with the kind of baby sunflower resting on top. And so I started working with this and it reminded me to look at things from different perspectives. So my first shots were really right here facing the front of each flower. But as I moved around, I tried some different compositions to really get some different perspectives and I think some really great images. So let's take a look at what I captured and then I'll walk you through some edits. Okay, so I wanted to first show you the images that I was able to capture on this beautiful autumn morning. So this was the view of this flower that really caught my eye when I was in the garden. I noticed that this little kind of baby flower was resting on the larger um, mother plant. And I loved the way it draped. Um, this one is kind of face down. This one's looking up at the sun. But I also loved the gorgeous color and bokeh behind it. So we're going to edit this one together. Now, this was the second shot that I took where I actually zoomed in on the um, smaller flower. Now, this is from the other side of the image. So as I moved around um, and actually let me go back to the import, I had actually flipped this image. So this one was flipped and then I did some cropping and some edits to it. But I really wanted to showcase that um, little flower still resting on top of the other one. Now, I also went in close and captured some of these gorgeous petals as they're just kind of falling down um, over the scene. Now, I did clip the tips of these petals, so I would probably take this into Photoshop and expand the canvas a little bit just because that, that bothers me. It may not bother you. Now, I also, as I moved around, I went, here's the same flower, I went to the complete other side of the flower. So I was able to walk around because this branch was hanging outside the garden, I was able to move around and capture it from a completely different perspective. So instead of capturing kind of the face of it, I was able to capture it this direction. And this direction looks very different. The petals are a little bit more upward facing and you've got this little baby here. I also like the leading lines and the soft light around it. Now, at this view, I also came in closer and I wanted to just capture these sweet little petals again, resting on this um, larger flower. And then my last view was I actually went completely around to the other side of the flower. So my first shots were straight on, like this view right here. And this view, I kind of walked around and captured again the draping. But what I liked about this was this leading line and the flower kind of looking up at all this gorgeous light. So if I compare these two images, let's do a reference and I'll show you. You can see um, the difference here. So this one is kind of facing up this way, but I've got really soft light and a little bit more of the branch. And this one is kind of hanging down a lot more of that deep, dark autumn color. So just simply walking around the image, I was able to get a different perspective and a couple different views for this flower. All right, so I thought today we would edit a couple of these together and let's get started with this guy. So I love the background, but I don't want it to be distracting. I also am not sure that I love the crop. So let's come in and crop this image just a little bit. I think I wanna go ahead and get rid of that last part of the branch. And I really don't want this in the center. I think I'm gonna move this over to where the flower is pretty much at the rule of thirds, right here on this line. I'm gonna click enter. And I think I like that um, a little bit better. I could even crop this a little tighter. and Maybe then give that just a little space right there. You have lots of options with um, an image like this, but I kind of want this side to be balanced with this side of the image, the greenery. 
All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do, because my histogram is, is really solid, I don't have any issues with the image, um, I don't have any real highlights clipped, it's a nice spread histogram, so I'm gonna jump right in. I'm going to select the background because that's what I wanna work with today. We're gonna see how well the mask did. It did okay, but let's go ahead and subtract, use our brush, make this brush smaller, and I wanna come in and just clean up this petal because I don't want the effect on my flower. But I don't need to be completely perfect with this. I just want, um, just don't want it on my flower. So I'm just gonna come in and check that. Okay, now what I wanna do with this mask is I want to soften the background. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reduce the clarity on the background. I just wanna make it really soft I'm also going to add a little of the negative dehaze. Now, I don't want it to be so bright, so I'm going to use the tone curve, and I'm just going to bring down the midtones there. So bringing that down so it's a little bit darker or warmer, but I've reduced the clarity. I can also reduce the texture to just kind of smooth it out. Now, I want to reduce the saturation a tiny bit overall to this background so that it doesn't compete with my flower. Then I can also play with the temperature tint slider to give it a little bit warmer, which I think I do like just a little touch of a little bit more blue temperature to it. All right, and I think that's all I need to do for that part of the image. Now what I wanna do is add another mask. I'm going to use objects, and I wanna come in and just impact the center of the flower. So for that, I'm going to open up the shadows and add just a pop of exposure, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of shadow opening, just to give it a little bit more detail. Then I'm going to add a third mask. I'm going to use the brush tool. And let's just brush this on right here in the center of our flower. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Just open up the shadows a little, and the exposure. So now we can see before and after. And I think it's processing, so let's give it, there it goes. Give it just a second there. All right, I'm really liking that. I think at this point, the only thing that I could do to finish off this image is I may come down and add a vignette just to give it a little more bring that vignette over to the black side and there we go I just think it's a little bit more of a melancholy um, got a little bit of that um, warmth in the corners now and I like that a lot so again before after just really giving emphasis to the center of that flower the center of the bottom sunflower and really muting that background Okay, so the other image in this set that I loved so much was this last image. And I did just a couple edits here in Lightroom. I, um, there was some black clipping, so I'll show you that, just right there at that little sunflower. So I fixed that and I did adjust the crop. Now this image I feel needs some more negative space at the bottom. So I'm going to right click edit in, I'm going to take it over into Photoshop so that we can extend that canvas. So let's jump over to Photoshop. And I've been working a little bit, but here is um, this image. So let's go ahead and extend this canvas together. I'm gonna duplicate the background layer and I'm going to go over to the crop tool. Now let me zoom, zoom back in a little bit so that you can see what I'm going to do. And what I want to do is just bring that down. Now we have a couple options up here. We can do content aware fill, which is the um, tool that we used to use. So this was the standard, but now we have generative expand. Now, if you don't see the menu for generative expand, you want to go to window and you want to add your contextual toolbar. So that's going to pop this up for us. So now I can click Generative Expand, and I don't need to type anything in here. I basically want the AI technology to expand this canvas. So I'm going to click Generate. 
And this is just an alternative to using the other fill method. And um, I get this message sometimes. Let's try it one more time and see if it will go through. Um, I feel like, I know this is a new feature, but I get that message quite a lot. I'm not sure if you guys do. I'm going to need to investigate that. But let's try it a second time because sometimes a second time actually works. I have full internet, no problem there. So I'm not sure why that message pops up. Um, I may have to shut down Photoshop and re Relog it. There we go. See what I'm saying? Um, it has happened to me many, many times. So if you get that error message when you try Generative Expand, just try it a second time. Um, I think they're still working out some bugs. All right. So it gives us three options to choose from. So here's option number one, which I'm very happy with. Here is option two, which actually is probably uh, maybe a little bit better. I don't like that leaf very much. So, and let's go to option three. I don't like that leaf. So option one was definitely the best option. So now we've got this expanded. I can decide if I want this leaf or I could actually remove this leaf. So what we can do is do a stamped layer, command option, shift, and the letter E. And I'm going to come over to the remove tool and... See if I can get that to come up in my menu. It's decided to um, disappear as well. So let me go um, find that tool. And it should, should be here. Usually it pops up. Here it is, remove tool. Okay, so now that I've got that, um, all these new, all these new tools. Let's go in and I'm going to highlight this leaf and I'm just going to come right up to that edge and click the checkbox and we'll just kind of get rid of that. I don't think it's necessary to the image, but if we decide we like it, we can always turn this layer off. And we'll see. Oh, it did a great job. Now there's a little bump right there, but I can crop that or even use the clone tool to fix it. So let's just go ahead and go to the clone tool and make the brush smaller. And I'm just going to target um, right above it. And there we go. That looks as good as new. Okay, so now for this image, I can save and go back to Lightroom and make my final edits. And I just feel like it's so much better having this beautiful negative space. I wish I had shot it that way. I was kind of in a hurry by the time I walked around to this side of the flower. So, you know, it happens. It happens to all of us. I always encourage you to check the um, bottom frame, kind of all four corners of your image so that you don't miss things like that. All right, so at this point, I think the crop is good because I like that. I'm going to go ahead and add a vignette because I think that's going to give me what I want. Now, I do want to reduce some noise that I'm seeing, and I definitely don't want any graininess in it. And then there's some highlights right here. I'm just going to go ahead and lower the highlights a little bit overall. I think that will help those little furry friends. And really at this point, I could be really happy um, overall with this image. We could add some texture. And if I wanted, I could use the mask and I could come in with, let's do the objects. And I'm just going to do a little object on our flower friend here. And maybe just give a little pop of exposure. There we go, just to give it a little bit more glow. And then if there were some parts of this other flower that I want to maybe darken a little, just to almost give it a gradient, I could just lower, yeah, lower that just a little bit. And I also, using the mask, these are those fine adjustments that you can decide. If it's an image you really like, which I really like this one, 
then making these small tweaks can really make an impact. So here I'm just going to reduce those highlights a little bit. There we go. So now we can see before. See how those highlights were there and now after. Now if you want to also grab the brush just right here. Just love that little glow that's in there. So I'm just going to come in and open that up just a little bit more. All right, I think that's it for this image. So out of this probably less than 30 minute kind of nature walk, I uncovered this gorgeous flower and I was able to get several images that I could even print and put in a series. So here's a view at some of the final shots. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you'll take a minute to subscribe, like, or leave me a comment.